Now let's suppose that we have our 50 ton block and our our next big one at the fortress here. Okay. Now all the Incans had to do was get the gap close to where they wanted it. On the top and the bottom. You see the you see the mistakes and all that kind of thing. That's no problem. Now what I'm concerned about is their fit, okay? So what they did was they took their rope saw here and they put it right here. Now remember it's between two like surfaces. So even if you cut right down through here, you're gonna cut an even line all the way down through there. Now if you have two like surfaces right here, you're gonna cut an even line right down through here. Alright? Now, I mean, if the ropes would hold their diameter, their diameter like this. Now, if they were to cut down a straight line in an un uneven surface, sur surface, they would take off an even amount of material on each side. All right? This is my, this is my theory. Now, the only way that that could work See, it would be like a rat tail file, except flexible. Okay? And they would saw back and forth and saw right down through here. Now, if they had a big imperfection, like, a like I said, okay, let's, let's, let, me, let me back up just one, one second. Remember what I said about the stone? It's 50 tons. Now, if they could move them 20 miles, then they can move them a little bit. All of the stones that I've seen are on bases, stone bases. They couldn't be set on dirt. And there's a reason for that. Okay, so they're set on stone bases, right? Alright. Because they need to cut underneath the stones too. So, we cut all the way down through here, right? To the bottom. And we're going to cut from all the way down here to over here. Okay, all the way down and to the right. And so they usually did it, unless it was a three-corner deal, in which they would do that, but it was a little bit different. Now notice on the bottom how um, irregular it is. And actually, they could have they could have um, had any type of irregularity. But the, the finer they cut the piece to the existing block that they wanted to mold it into, say like the cut right down here, then the less sawing they'd have to do or the less passes now I, what I predict is they made multiple passes what they did okay suppose they okay they cut down here all right now cut off 50 percent here and 50 percent here okay no problem and they have a stone base right here uh, we'll do it like this oh. let me turn that around we have stone base from what I can see is right here Okay? Now, if you'll notice in all the Incan fortresses, all their stone bases are rounded right here. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because as we take our cutter here, and we come down right to here, right? Now remember, there is no pressure on this stone and the other stone for the rope to collapse against all the hundreds of tons however big it is because you're cutting down between two areas okay and the one thing about stone is as far as I know is stone doesn't bend okay now if it was wood or you'd have a problem with that so my theory still holds so we've cut down here now remember this is this is a hundred tons now they start to cut over here to, to uh, even out this side to set the base. Now theoretically they could take this saw if it was a rat tail let's say it was a, where's my rat tail at? Suppose they had this cord, it's flexible remember, that's all they had. They could cut almost all the way over to right here All right, before the stone would start to feel pressure on this end. Now by putting uh, some wooden splints here or up here, they could literally cut all the way down to here, put 
put another little wooden splint right there. This is wooden, I don't know what it was. And they could cut the rest of the stone. The weight of the stone would keep the line from failing. Then if they did not take out these imperfections that they didn't want, they would keep, they could cut it multiple times down. They could keep cutting and cutting and cutting until there was no stone left. But if the theory holds, they would have to cut into 50% of the base. So what I'm saying is the basis of these stones holds the key. Now there's another process they had to do first, which I'll show you. Because they didn't have giant laser swords or everything else. No, another thing I noticed. I don't know if other Incanologists have noticed it, but it's uh, October 14, 2010. My name is Randy Hoffman, and um, I'm going to solve this mystery. So any of you other Incan archaeological express, uh, professors, um, journalists, whatever it is, uh, you had 500 years. I solved it, and I'm the first to get over it. Now, let me, let me tell you something else I noticed about the pictures. You see these stones right here? Now these are two Incan stones too, but these are actual size Incan stones. Now we know that they use stones like this in their uh, terraces and their rough walls. But none of them are cut with an inverted deal right here, or I haven't seen any. Has anyone, um, if you're from uh, Peru or uh, an Incanologist, have you ever seen any of their small stones like this cut with the precision of the large stones? Now remember, they did not use mortar. So theoretically, they could lift the stone off and move it if they wanted to. That's not the point. The point is this. The Incas did not hand carve or rope knife, carve, small stones for one reason. And I want to show you these. I set this up. So we have, and if, if there is a, a miniature uh, temple or something that's all carved out like they're big ones, then please, I'd like to see that. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you the reason they couldn't do it. Here we have our rope saw, and here we have our standard size rocks. Now watch. Okay, and we got, we got two guys on one side and two guys on the other, whatever it is. Okay, I'm holding it right here. Okay, we're going to start sawing. Saw, 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 saw. Oh, look at that. The rope went right through it. Now, even if these stones were absolutely uh, flush on the bottom, like this, those stones would still move. Hi, oh, John. Those stones would still move because they didn't weigh enough. That was the one factor in why they did not mold these small stones. Okay? So there had to be a certain weight limit because a rope saw could only work on a in situ statutory heavy object and if you're going between them that would not move at all now okay let's get on with this suppose they all right they made one cut these were these are rough into the wall could be the first second third level doesn't matter okay you had all the guys on the bottom now they're pulling now one thing I didn't I, I couldn't figure did they pull horizontally say the second course you know 20 feet up horizontally or did they pull down to the ground on each side that I don't know but the rope marks will tell so they cut all the way over to here right all right then they uh, uh, chop this off and we have 50 percent off of all this so then what they have to do remember they're cutting from right to left Let's see right to, right to left yeah they have to put a rope around this and pull this up to the 
existing stone that they're cutting into. And this shows it on every one of their work. Now, if they pull this stone up right here, let's just say, yeah, here we go. That looks okay. Suppose they made one, one pass, all right? And you still have this blemish down here in this one stone. So what they do is they cut it again. And they cut over this way again. Now the reason I say that they cut here again is because all their corners are rounded. Now if they used a chipped hammer, which they didn't have, it would have ruined these corners. Now they could do this again and again and again. But if they did and it took off 50% of this side, this stone would slowly melt in here. Or it would leave a curved edge of stone right there. See? You see? Just like they have. Now on the next course, the stonemason gets the stone where he wants it close somehow. He measures it and he gets the stone up here. I don't know how they got the stone up there. Okay, I'm still working on that. But we know that they, they hauled them 20 miles. They could certainly move the stone 15 feet. Okay, they put the stone up here. And then what they do is they've already got this one carved in here. Okay, that's forgotten about. It's done. This is 20 tons. This is 100 tons, whatever it is. Then what they do is they start to carve the other stone into here and here. See? And if you look at my logic, you will see it could have been done like that. Now, they may have used, just like our files, rat tail files, they may have used a coarse cutting rope and they could have gone down to these smaller ones. And these smaller ones I believe are what they used on the temples of Cusco because the the lines are so fine. The lines are very very fine right here. Look at this. The lines are very very fine in Cusco. But if you had two of these blocks, two, two, two of these, just say that your your Cusco cutter um, stone cutter was he could he could get these fairly flat okay you you wouldn't have to do that much work to pull it along but if this string uh, excuse me if this rope cutting saw took off 50 percent of the top and the bottom of the stone it was cutting through okay it would slowly le level it now remember that Incan architecture is not vertically vertical or it's not horizontal like say this brick or this. They couldn't do it. And they didn't care to do it. All they were trying to do is fit the stone, but the only way to fit the stone without horizontal or vertical is they would have to have rough lines. Therefore, that's the way I believe they did it. Now I have, a, I have one final experiment that I want to try. We know they had all these things. Another thing too is, this is what's called a water level. Water seeks its own level. This was used in Egypt. It's used in a lot of places. But what they could do is if you fill the water up to right there, they could see from there all the way around that that was level because that water would be level and it seeks its own level. Now this is say off 15 degrees. So they look over here and they say okay it's level here and that's 15 degrees drop. Okay? Now they didn't have to find 15 degrees. All they had to do was fine, but they wanted it. Now there's a reason for that. So they had a water level, which doesn't exist today, and they had a, a plumb bob, <clears throat> which determines. So you say you've got okay. So you've got this huge stone right here, right? The engineer is he's holding this plumb bob on the rope straight down. right here. Okay, that's level. That uh, That is level to that. Do you see? 
you'd have to draw a line, okay, and you'd have a level cut. 